Hello, um, welcome to the second lecture um, for the seminar, for the TOPOS seminar, um, in which we are talking about um, this novel by Virginia Woolf, To the Lighthouse, in light of the mathematical concepts that we've been discussing in the seminar. So um, what I thought I would do is um, pick out some interesting parts of the text and talk about them in relation to some of the concepts that we've already talked about a little bit, such as abstraction, diachronicity, um, and in this case specifically, the movement of language in relation to space and time. Because this is something which um, Lots of critics have talked about this in relation to Wolf over the years, um, some, sometimes a little bit reductively, I would say. Um, and so I don't want to produce any one unified determinant reading here today at all. Um, it's more to open up um, some areas for you to think more about some of the concepts um, that we've been talking about, because it's clear that Wolf wants to say things about um, all of the topics we've been um, talking about, abstraction, the relationship between mathematics and the humanities and the emotions, um, specifically abstraction and empathy. Um, but she's not saying one thing. Even very specifically at one point, she says, nothing was any one thing. And that is, I think, very important. Um, and again, uh, people have, have, have talked about the concept of a multiplicity of perspectives. Um, and yes, I think that's definitely something which Wolf talks about. I think there are other things uh, that we can draw out maybe in addition to that um, to do with still to do with perce uh, perspective, um, perspective and perception, um, and also to do with vision, to do with light, to do with um, geometry and the line, um, even the notion of a beam of light, which is um, what the lighthouse, what a lighthouse emits. Um, so I have uh, shown you that here this, um, image from the first edition of the novel, which was um, painted by Wolf's sister, Vanessa Bell, who was an artist. And um, I think this is interesting because so much of, um, of what is talked about with the character Lily Briscoe, the painter, is this, um, this struggle with how to articulate what is inside or there's definitely a lot of discussion about interior interiority and interior um maybe i don't know maybe we want to say movement or kind of psychic movement not in a not in a kind of mystical way but um psychical movement you could say um and something intensive which which happens um, in the midst of a of a sentence that Wolf writes, and nothing outward has happened. And this is something which um, in this time in the in the early 20th century, um, in earlier times, people would have said, um, well, nothing happens in this novel. Nothing happens. There's no plot. But um, that's exactly the point in a way, because the drama is not at the level of what happens between the characters with discussions with, um, I don't know, fights or uh, dramatic events. I mean, there are dramatic events, but they are skated over in this middle section, just um, in the midst of a few sentences, we are told that, for example, Mrs. Ramsey dies suddenly. This is not the thing which is dramatized, what is dramatized is these um, minute moments. And I think the word moment is really important um, for Wolf because 
um, in a moment, everything happens. And um, so time is, re time is really important for Wolf, especially always and especially in this novel. Um, because, and I will show you some examples of moments. Um, and Wolf is fantastic at um, isolating the drama which goes on in, um, in a reaction to something and the complexity of somebody's reaction to something um, and the way that she narrates this is extremely powerful, extremely subtle, and um, it's, it's extremely impressive. Um, so, uh, and the, the reason why it's um, extremely impressive is because she is writing within the constraints of the temporality of um, writing a linear story still, let's say, but what she's, um, articulating is much more complex than that. Um, there are several things happening. Um, and the idea of the moment is a way in which to somehow capture beyond um, a linear kind of successive passing of time, maybe. So that's one thing. Um, okay, so... Uh, this is something first to, just to flag post. I don't want to spend too much time talking about this because again, this is something which has been written about quite a lot um, by people um, wanting to theorize and analyze Wolf. Um, but it is worth pointing out for you because um, it's related to what we've been talking about in, in some ways. Um, so the, the title, To the Lighthouse, um, is interesting because of the formulation. It's not just the lighthouse and it's not, um, so it's not about the lighthouse, the object itself. Um, and it's not kind of at the lighthouse or in the lighthouse. Um, it's um, to the lighthouse. So, so and, and to, as I'm sure you know, is a preposition. Um, so, and a preposition is denoting the relationship to the noun or the pronoun. And in this case, the noun is the lighthouse. Um, and it's a preposition of direction. So it's about the, the um, journey, let's say, to the lighthouse, um, but it's not just about um, a physical, uh, extensive external journey to the lighthouse that does happen in the novel but I think it's about more than just the the physical journey in the boat across the water to the lighthouse it's about the what happens in the process of seeing the lighthouse or seeing anything um it's about an intention um as well as a direction or a destination so that's just something to to remember. Um, okay, so let's start then with the vision. Um, vision is given a huge amount of uh, time and space <laughs> in this novel. Um, and here you can see this is one image. I will show you several images of the Godrivi lighthouse um, in St Ives in Cornwall in the UK, which is um, the lighthouse which she, which Wolf based this on. Um, she, the, the novel is meant to be set on the Isle of Skye in Scotland, but um, she actually went with her family every in the summer times when she was young to St Ives in Cornwall, and this is the lighthouse um, that she's writing about. So let's start with this first sentence. I'll just take you through some sentences. Um, but nevertheless, the fact remained, it was impossible to dislike anyone if one looked at them. So this is interesting, um, not so much uh, in terms of whether we want to agree or disagree, um, but just because it highlights um, a separateness between, or a separation between how one might think about a person in one's mind's eye and how one might think about someone uh, when one physically sees that person in front of them. Um, 
So this there this brings up uh, lots of questions about judgment, um, about uh, perception again, um, and about different types of vision. So um, whether you think this is a silly statement, um, I think this is Lily Briscoe, um, and most of the the quotations that I found, sentences that I found relating to vision are, to, are from Lily Briscoe, the painter, the artist. And I think this is important because she is meditating all the way through the novel about um, this. I mean, a lot of the characters are actually thinking through this relationship between um, interior experience and external articulation. Um, so uh, that's that's one thing to think about. Let's look at the next one. And this is um, Lily med thinking about how she feels about uh, the kind of maternal figure in the novel, Mrs. Ramsey, um, because she has quite intense feelings about Mrs. Ramsey, which are quite complex, I think. She says, for days there hung about her, as after a dream, some subtle change is felt in the person one has dreamt of, more vividly than anything she said, the sound of murmuring, and as she sat in the wicker armchair in the drawing room window, she wore to Lily's shapes an august shape, the shape of a dome. So this is interesting um, because often what Wolf is doing in her similes or metaphors and the way she is um, elaborating on describing something, she makes very vivid these um, analogies of or kind of um, it's as though there is some extra sense that she's drawing on and playing with um, because this so she has um, this is after an episode where she has had a moment of intimacy with Mrs. Ramsey, um, where she she has kind of feelings of love, attraction, maybe also envy. Different different. There's an there's a charged, um, intense feeling she has for Mrs. Ramsey, and so she's kind of has this moment where she's. Um, resting on her, holding her knees, holding Mrs. Ramsey's knees and resting on her knees. Um, and then after that, this is how she um, feels. So, and it becomes visual um, because it says, um, hanging about her is this shape. Um, and it says she wore to Lily's eyes an August shape, the shape of a dome. So it's as though she has this extra shape or this glow around her, um, which, although she says it's subtle, I would say it's, I mean, it doesn't sound that subtle. A dome is this majestic, um, it, it conjures up feelings of majesty. Um, and uh, I think this is the fact that this comes to Lily's eyes the eyes that she, in this sentence are somehow operating differently to um, the eyes in this first uh, sentence when it was impossible to dislike anyone if one looked at them. So there are many things going on there with vision, I think. Um, so eyes are not just looking, they are operating on different levels, I think. Okay, um, Okay, so next um, we have some more sentences on vision and seeing. And um, this one is Mrs. Ramsey, and she's trying to remember um, whether Paul and Nancy, I think it is, 
two of the younger members of the group in the holiday house have gone off and I think she's trying to match make them um trying to get them together and hopefully they'll get married at this point and she's trying to remember if um oh no it's not Nancy it's it's Paul and Minta I think and Nancy is the third one who she's trying to remember if Nancy has gone as well and if Nancy has gone then it's less likely there will be romance going on between the others and so she says whether Nancy was there or not she could not be certain looking from one to the other in her mind's eye so in it um here uh her mind's eye she actually says this the mind's eye is seems to be a quite a powerful organ here because it's actually tr using um memory and the internal uh visual recall to try and look um at the last time she saw these two walking away um to see if she could remember seeing Nancy with them. So the, it, it, if there was a little camera that was following around these, um, these characters and their thoughts and their, uh, the direction of their thoughts, this camera would be, it would be interesting to think about how many cameras would be needed, lots of cameras moving around in different directions um, on a band of different types, I think. So there's the mind's eye being described here. Okay, and next, another um, another quotation from sentence from Mrs. Ramsey, this is. Um, All the being and the doing, expansive, glittering, vocal, evaporated, and one shrunk with a sense of solemnity to being oneself, a wedge-shaped core of darkness, something invisible to others. So um, this is interesting because what I said at the beginning about things being dramatized, which are not the um, what we might expect to be dramatized. There are dramatizations going on within characters which may not visibly be apparent or demonstrated. So um, Mrs. Ramsey, who everybody seems to love because she's social, she is um, maternal, she has eight children, she somehow keeps the family together, all the children are always coming to her for everything, um, and she seems to have some kind of contro control or maybe because she's very also very attractive, all men seem to love her. Um, as well as her husband and somehow need her. Um, so she is, and, and she's somehow aware of this. Um, and then when it somehow departs from her, this outward facing uh, being for others, um, then it says one shrunk with a sense of solemnity to being oneself. And this would not be perceptible necessarily, um, but it's been it's being rendered geometrically. She shrinks, she becomes smaller, um, a wedge-shaped core of darkness. So the glittering, um, it, she is emitting light when she's doing this, like the lighthouse. And then when she uh, switches off, She's not, she's, it's, she's the absence of light. She's a wedge shaped core of darkness um, and she's invisible to others. So this is a fascinating description of the way a person is, is operating as a light. So they are switched on and they are switched off. Um, but Wolf says it much more subtly than that. Okay. Um, more on light then. Let's see if I can just make this look better. There we go. Um, Thus brought up suddenly into the light, it seemed possessed of great size and depth, was like a world in which one could take one's staff and climb hills, she thought and go down into valleys, and to her pleasure, 
for it brought them into sympathy momentarily, she saw that Augustus too feasted his eyes on the same plate of fruit, plunged in, broke off a bloom there, a tassel here, and returned after feasting to his hive. Um, this, is, this is a moment, they're all at the dinner table um, and people are reacting differently to this uh, moment of eating together. And the, what's being described here is a fancy, colorful fruit decoration in the middle of the table. Um, and Mrs. this is Mrs. Ramsey speaking. And for her, the way that she perceives this is um, as though it becomes, uh, the dimensions change and it becomes something that she can navigate and, and walk and explore and climb hills and go down into valleys. And then she sees um, the man Augustus Carmichael, the poet, um, and he's also looking at it from a different place, from a different perspective and with different intentions. Um, and so in a way we could think of this somehow in parallel to the way that the lighthouse is um, being perceived uh, at, at the beginning of the novel as from various different points converging on to the one point of the lighthouse and all having different um, intentions, perspectives and things to say. Um, here, uh, rather than Augustus, his, his um, reaction or intention towards this uh, centerpiece of the table is almost inverse to Mrs. Ramsey's because he wants to um, he wants to eat it, so he wants to ingest it. She somehow wants to be part, go into it, and he sometimes wa he wants it to go into him. So, um, and this is um, a little bit an, an amusing because um, at this point as well, uh, Augustus gets it almost gets in trouble with Mr. Ramsey, who is the stern um, philosopher. Uh, because he asks for another plate of soup. Um, but Mr. Ramsey keeps it to himself. Um, and that's another moment of outwardly not anything being perceptible, but inwardly there's a drama going on. Um, but uh, here, um, yeah, these two different perspectives. So um, continuing then with this, um, here's another uh, sentence about um, looking about um, vision um, and intention and actually using the, um, the word beam, which is exactly what the lighthouse does. So, um, and the word ray, so a light ray. So she says, um, Looking along his beam, she added to it her different ray, thinking that she was unquestionably the loveliest of people bowed over her book, the best perhaps, but also different too from the perfect shape which one saw there. So um, she, I can't remember, I think this, I think the, uh, the hymn mentioned here is William Banks um, and he also is under the spell of Mrs. Ramsey, as is Lily. So they are both looking uh, admiringly, lovingly at uh, Mrs. Ramsey and um, that both of their beams of intention, of admiration, um, just looking from their eyes are represented or articulated here as light. Um, and so this is a very beautiful description um, and is also showing how um, even though uh, Lily says she was unquestionably the loveliest of people, um, but Lily is aware that she's not necessarily all that she is 
what, as the as they can see her. Um, different too from the perfect shape which one saw there. So there are lots of things um, about light and vision and intention here. So outward um, projection, how about the inverse of inward projection? Or we could say introspection. Um, so here is uh, a sentence um, about Mrs. Ramsey and her experience and her perception, which is in some way similar to the previous one where her light seems to turn off and she, beca and she became that wedge of darkness. Um, so immediately, Mrs. Ramsey seems to fold herself together, one petal closed in another, and the whole fabric fell in exhaustion upon itself so that she had only strength enough to move her finger in exquisite abandonment to exhaustion across the page of Grimm's fairy story, while there throbbed through her like a pulse in a spring which has expanded to its full width and now gently ceases to beat the rapture of successful creation. So the exhaustion which she's feeling here is not, I don't think that's meant to be uh, perceived as a kind of physical exhaustion such as um, you've just been running around or something. It's more like the exhaustion of uh, socially, so, uh, of um, facilitating social cohesion, let's say. And that's a more invis invisible kind of uh, expenditure of energy. Um, and when she has the moment to not be doing that, she folds herself together. And it's as though she's a flower and the petal folding in. Um, and, um, and this is again uh, a beautiful way of describing. And in some ways, um, it makes me think now of the of the final uh, sentence of of the novel, the whole novel, when Lily Briscoe is also um, exhausted. She's she's although it's described as extreme fatigue, she draws the line and she says, "Yes, I've had my vision." Um, and that's almost an inverse to what's happening here because this is more, because there's a finality about these, these movements of internality or externality. Um, it feels like to me here, um, of projecting, projecting internally or pro projecting externally. And, um, in a way there is between Lily Briscoe and Mrs. Ramsey, there are some quite different uh, modes of being, you could even, you could say, I guess, because, um, and, so, and, and without wanting to psychoanalyze these characters, because I don't think that's, that's not what, so much what we're interested in here, but there is something about um, a kind of, uh, a kind of creativity, um, and a kind of femininity, which Lily Briscoe is always saying all through the novel, how she is not, she's not the way that women should be. And she clearly admires Mrs. Ramsey, who is the way, as she sees it, the way a woman should be. And she's had eight children and everybody admires her and everybody is attracted to her. Um, and Lily is this somehow different type of woman who uh, is, is as yet unmarried, um, doesn't seem to have the right looks, and she's trying to do a different type of um, projection rather than projecting children. <laughs> she's projecting, uh, she's painting, and she's creating. So I think there's an interesting uh, way of not quite mirroring but between Lily Briscoe and Mrs Ramsey there's an interesting way of uh, 
they're somehow the inversions of one another, maybe. Just thinking about that now. Um, okay, so um, a few more uh, thoughts about um, uh, moments. Here are three sentences which um, are uh, narrating moments or articulating moments. Um, firstly, I think I mentioned this at the beginning, for nothing was simply one thing. This is, I think, important for the, for the novel in general, um, because what Wolf does without um, kind of totalizing what she's saying ever, it's much more delicate than that. She is showing momentarily in moments, um, showing us different angles. It's so much about angles, I think. Um, so nothing was simply one thing because there are, there are already always so many angles from which to look at the, anything. Um, so I think this is an important line. And then another one. Of such moments, she thought, the thing is made that endures. So this, in terms of um, temporality, you have a moment, which is quick moment, is only a moment. Um, and then within that moment, there is a kind of in enduring, it's something it endures, something is made permanent or something is made eternal. Um, so that's an, almost as though, an, that's almost like some kind of epiphanic moment where something is somehow revealed, which is of a different temporal order than the succession of moments. Um, and it makes me think now of a, a one um, quotation from another text from Wolf, uh, an essay she wrote on modern fiction called Modern Fiction. Um, it's probably the most quoted sentence from that essay, but she says, um, life is not, uh, life is not a series of gig lamps symmetrically arranged. Life is a luminous halo, a semi-transparent envelope. Um, and if, uh, I can't remember the uh, end of the line, but it's something about, uh, rejecting this success, successive, uh, line of moments in favor of a, uh, a luminous halo. Um, and again, this brings us back to the lighthouse because what is, what does a lighthouse produce if not a luminous halo? Because it's going all around. Its beam is going all around. Um, so it's something about uh, different temporal orders uh, in this, in the, the Wolfian moment. Yeah. And then the, the final one on this slide, um, with a sudden intensity, as if she saw it clear for a second, she drew a line there in the center. And this is from the last, the last uh, part of the novel, the last few sentences. And this is when Lily Briscoe, who has been painting, um, doing this painting through the whole novel, she finishes it, um, or she finishes it to her, to her satisfaction. And that's the important thing, um, because after she, she suddenly draws a line and it's the line which for her completes the vision. She says that her last line is, yes, I've had my vision and this is the end of the novel. Um, and that is another of these moments of, of also epiphanic moments, but it's interesting that it's a line. And, and I always think it's interesting to try and imagine what the painting looks like, because at this time, and this is what relates, uh, one of the reasons why it relates, I think, to abstraction is that um, 
she, uh, and I wonder if this is in the next slide. Um, there was a slide on, sorry, one second. Um, no, I can't find it now. Um, at the close to the beginning, we have um, Charles Tansley, um, who is looking, who's a very slightly dislikable character who's looking at um, Lily's painting. And he kind of pokes at a purple triangle, which is um, on the painting. And this is meant to be Mrs. Ramsay and her son, little son, James six-year-old boy and it's just a purple triangle and to to uh most people this would be described as a kind of abstraction it's an abstract kind of uh rendering and there's a it's a geometric kind of rendering so it's a triangle and then and this this also um relates then also to the description at the end where uh it's a line it's just a line which finishes the vision um it's not intended as a kind of reflective, uh, mimetic type of painting. And I think that's uh, also important, significant. Uh, this is this, I've just realized this is here. This is where it was. Mother and, and this is the, the man who is looking at the painting. Um, he's thinking about this abstract uh, purple shape. Mother and child then, objects of universal veneration, and in this case, the mother was famous for her beauty, might be reduced, he pondered, to a purple shadow without irreverence. So um, we're not sure whether at this point he is somehow mocking or whether he's seriously considering that um, this kind of abstraction is whether it's somehow um, irreverent or not. Um, this new way of um, projecting, articulating, depicting, um, which is what Lily is attempting to do. And it's interesting how she, and, and Charles Tansley, this slightly dislikable character is saying, and she is playing this over and over, um, he says women can't write, women can't paint. Um, and she is flying in the face of that by painting. And yet she's, she's um, struggling with, with the lack of confidence throughout. And um, I do think this is um, significant and uh, Wolf is, 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 making a kind of well she's just I think she's just showing the ways that it really would have been still quite difficult to be taken seriously doing this as a woman um but the the vision which is Lily's vision is finished by the end so there's a kind of a triumph um and it's a triumph which comes from the painting of one line um so the painting is an abstract kind of painting. Um, and it's through often Wolf, what Wolf does is that she, Lily, in, in dealing with the painting, Lily is kind of, well, even just moving it around, um, as we can see in the next uh, quotation here, in doing that, she, that's how she relates to the world through the painting or through the doing of the painting. Um, she she hasn't produced eight children, but she has produced this painting. Um, and I think that's important, one of the important things uh, to come out of this novel. It was love, she thought, pretending to move her canvas, distilled and filtered. Love that never attempted to clutch its object, but like the love which mathematicians bear their symbols or poets their phrases, was meant to be spread over the world and become part of the human again. So she's thinking about love. And I think this, the way she, uh, she likens it to 
the love mathematicians bear their symbols and the love that poets bear their phrases is a kind of, um, this is a kind of abstract love because um, the phrase that a phrase that you love in a, a, po a line of poetry that you love, it's always the same, um, but it doesn't get tired somehow. And um, it, it's the same through time. Um, but it's not, it's, it's different every time and it has new life all the time and it's not boring. Um, it's the same as a, as a mathematical symbol. Um, it's kind of a mobile uh, symbol or object maybe. Um, so this is a kind of ob abstract love I think she's talking about here. So those are some thoughts. Um, which I have gone through um, about vision, about um, seeing and intention and direction and geometric lines and time, uh, time and space then. Um, so I hope that is um, opens things up for you a little bit and I will look forward to discussing more with you in the sessions that are coming up. <laughs>